The next group of fellowships that we're going to award this evening uh, is the Department of Economic Development, Jobs, Transport and Resources, 2018 Jobs Victoria International Fellowships. So the Jobs Victoria International Fellowships provide an opportunity for practitioners working within contracted Jobs Victoria organisations to investigate and explore models and approaches that deliver mainstream employment outcomes for job seekers facing barriers to employment. The outcomes and impact of international fellowship research in this area is designed to advance innovative best practice and emerging models of delivering employment support to some of the most vulnerable people in our community. And I would like to invite Katrina Curry to join me to present these awards. Katrina is the Executive Director of the Employment Outcomes, Policy, Program, Small Business and Employment Division. And can I also ask our Deputy Chair Katrina to come up and uh, join uh, in the um, awarding of these. So, thank you. So our first recipient this evening is Sarah Amaral. Sarah's recently returned from her international fellowship travel in the US and Brazil, where she investigated emerging approaches to effective employment models for young disadvantaged job seekers. She looked at innovative job creation models for employment, challenge, for employment challenges faced by youth in the hosting countries that she visited. And going to two very different countries, one being a third world country, one being a very western country, allowed her the opportunity to really uh, draw some really, really interesting comparisons. So Sarah, would you like to please come on up? Thank you. <laughs> The next fellow that will be awarded this evening is Gina. Gina's recently returned from her international fellowship travel in the US and Canada. Her fellowship created an opportunity to uh, meet with leading international researchers and service providers to review best practice, develop partnership opportunities, and share that knowledge with employment and youth mental health services in Australia. So Gina, would you like to uh, come up please? Thank you. Our next uh, recipient is Simon Crabb. And again, Simon has recently returned from his international fellowship travels in the US, where he was exploring employer-driven, demand-led approaches to employment, and uh, also models for scaling demand-led approaches that generate new opportunities for long-term job seekers. So can you please put your hands together for Simon? <laughs> Okay, our uh, next fellowship uh, recipient is Georgia King. Georgia has recently returned from her travels also, uh, where she went to the US. Georgia's fellowship focused on investigating innovative programs around engaging disadvantaged young people into supportive and sustainable employment. And I know Georgia actually spent quite a bit of time in youth detention centres in the States. Um, which, having uh, heard some of her stories, has not only did she have a remarkable experience, but the uh, knowledge that she gained over there, it's going to, um, I think, be put to very, very good use in Victoria. So please put your hands together for Georgia. <laughs> Okay, our next uh, fellowship recipient is uh, Mark Little. And Mark's also recently returned from his fellowship travels. You can imagine working in the office where we're constantly talking to people, I've just come back from overseas, I've just come back from overseas. Sometimes, you know, you, it's, we live vicariously through them, don't we? We certainly do. Now, Mark's international fellowship travels saw him also um, go to the USA, the UK and Singapore. And his focus was to observe the practical application of best practice justice prevention programs in those particular countries. 
specifically looking at uh, offenders who are at risk of a life of crime through exposure to the criminal justice system or at high risk of reoffending or progressing further into the justice system. So please put your hands together for Mark. Our uh, next uh, awardee is Victoria Mead. And Victoria recently returned from her uh, international travel where she um, researched frameworks that are currently being utilised in the US for women who are job seekers and who have barriers of family violence, abuse and poverty. Um, so she was exploring models uh, in that space in um, the US, particularly in California. And uh, can I please ask you to all put your hands together and uh, congratulate Victoria. Okay, our next um, fellowship recipient is Lorraine Thompson. And uh, once again, Lorraine has recently returned from her travels uh, to the UK, where her research focused on the identification, investigation and implementation of best practice approaches when engaging with disengaged women of all community groups, uh, with a particular focus on women from uh, refugee uh, or refugee cohorts, uh, and she was looking at ways to get them into work experience that ultimately leads to sustainable employment. So can you please put your hands together for Lorraine. <laughs> and all of you in the corner, thank you. You're doing exactly as required. I really appreciate it. Okay, our uh, next awardee is uh, Dr Nicola Watts. Uh, and Nicola's fellowship will focus on learning from a range of innovative place-based strategies which draw on the following two concepts. Firstly, the principle of the quadruple helix of industry, government, researchers slash educators and community all working together to deliver po positive social impact. And secondly, the notion or, uh, and principles of green jobs and social enterprises that both support new job creation and encourage engagement amongst cohorts who are at risk of long-term unemployment. So could you please put your hands together for Nicola? And uh, the final uh, recipient that's with us this evening uh, is Osra Wells. And Osra has also recently returned from her international fellowship travels in Europe. Um, her fellowship looked at best practice examples of joint program servicing and partnerships which increase employment for young people with barriers in the context of, of a technology disruption. Uh, and Osra chose some really interesting places to go to, all of which were really cold, none of which I understand why anybody would choose to go to those places, but nonetheless, I'm sure you learnt some fantastic things that we will learn all about. So Osra, please uh, come on up and if you could please put your hands together for her. And uh, there was a 10th um, award or fellowship awarded to uh, a Jobs Victoria practitioner by the name of Rick Sproul, but Rick was not able to be with us this evening. Um, Rick's fellowship will actually uh, look at social entrepreneurship with a developing nation uh, and looking at the strategies employed to empower an underskilled cohort that are experiencing the impact of disadvantage. Um, so uh, Rick is actually heading to Vietnam to look at the way social enterprise is set up in a third world country um, and he's looking to bring that back and apply it in the context of the Indigenous community in um, Western Victoria. So um, perhaps we can just quickly acknowledge Rick in our speech here. Thank you both very, very much. <coughs> Hey, this evening um, we're very, very excited that uh, two of our fellows are going to uh, present to you. The uh, theme of tonight's presentations is around um, the economic impact of fellowships. 
Um, our phthalates come from a wide range of industry sectors, as Amalia alluded to earlier on. Uh, but having just recently um, undergone or taken part in an evaluation, which is the first evaluation the Institute has actually conducted in 27 years, one of the really clear messages that um, has come out of that, and I will talk to you a little bit more about that later on this evening, is that um, irrespective of the industry sector that our fellows come from, there are personal, industry, industry and community benefits that are derived from these fellowships. And a lot of those benefits